correct me if I'm a little off track. Um, I kind of fell off the boat for a while and got lost and started fighting the devil and fighting the world and fighting family, fighting legal and just fighting everything. And I just felt like I was going to jump off the boat. So, uh, anyways, God strengthen me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm back. Um, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, the Lord, to come before your throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, for all of your wonderful miracles and benefits you bestowed upon us. Each day is a special gift for you, Lord. We just want to thank you for it, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, to be my mouthpiece, Lord. Don't let me speak out of turn. Don't let you rush to judgment. Don't let me say anything that's not of you, Lord. Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost, Lord. Inspire me, Lord, with your Spirit, Lord, and let me bring forth the message that you would have me to bring and not one that would make you famous or popular or anything that would exalt me, lest it not exalt you. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, um, a couple days ago, me and my wife got to talking, and we were having this conversation about um, putting God first, putting God first, putting God first, and I started realizing something. Um, not only was the subject matter continually coming up, but also, I kept thinking about John chapter 15. And I was wondering, what kind of combination could there be between those two? I don't really see any relevance. That didn't mean the relevance wasn't there. It meant that I didn't see it. Okay? So the fault was not with God, it was with me. Okay? So I went in the room later that night and I, I prayed. And he gave me John 15. And he also gave me Matthew 6 and a couple other verses. And when I started looking at all of them, he started giving me a message to, to deliver. So, take no offense, lest just because your spirit's not right with God, okay? All the people of the United States, all the people of everybody in every other country in the world, this is not to offend you, this is not to disrespect Russia or disrespect the Taliban or anybody else, okay? It just is what it is. Okay, I must be used by God first. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. Okay? And the name of this message is called, Where Do Your Allegiances Lie? Okay? It was given to me on June 5th of 2015, which was yesterday. Um, we talk about the Pledge of Allegiance of the Flag. Uh, we, we, we serve money. We serve men. We serve family. We serve bosses. We serve everything. But sometimes in the chaos of serving everybody else, we forget what's most important. The most high and mighty God. That should have been first on your list. Okay? Sometimes we forget that. I forgot that. I started thinking about all the cares of life. Where are we going to move to? What are we going to do? Um, how are we going to get Rachel's money to help her get her wedding going? How am I going to sell this TV? My mind got so cluttered and all the stuff became so important to me that I could no longer see that which was important that came first which was Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You see? Doesn't matter what man preaches, it's that Jesus Christ came to be crucified for your sacrifice. That's all that matters. Okay? So let's begin with uh, what looks like the end <laughs> of most other messages. And... If I was to present this message in a fashion such that it was the end, you would see that I'd be presenting this message in the fashion in which I that you would expect to be hearing from me right now. But see, what I'm what I'm going to tell you right now is not what you expect to hear. It's going to be the reverse. Okay. Revelations chapter three, verses sixteen and fifteen. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were cold or hot, because you were lukewarm and neither cold or hot, and I am about to vomit you out of my mouth. See, God doesn't want you to be um, lukewarm. He figures if you want, um, if you can be lukewarm, you can be doing anything but serving God. Okay? Yeah, God's all right. Whatever. Jesus is just all right with me. No, he's not just all right. He's the beginning, the end, the alpha, the, the omega, everything important, everything relevant, everything meaningful and powerful and potent and necessary for your very breath in this life is Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the truth. Okay. Next, tell us what we'll talk to you about. 
Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. I'm sorry I'm preaching off a computer. Um, my printer ran out of ink, and I had to put it in storage. So I, could, I couldn't print this out to where I could present it to you. Bang, bang, bang. Because you know how I like look at the camera when I do this. But I'm, but I'm talking to an individual as well as the group. So I like to talk to you when I'm preaching. So I apologize for looking back and forth, but that's just what it is. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on this earth where moth and consuming insects destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where there are neither moth nor consuming insect destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there lies your heart also. The eye of the lamp is of the body. Therefore, if your eye is sincere, your whole body will be full of light. I'll get, I'll get back to that in a second. But if your eye is evil, your whole body will be dark. Therefore, if the light in you is darkness, how great then is that darkness? No one will be able to serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or he shall be devoted to the one and despise the other. You are not able to serve God and money. We just addressed that. You can only have one master in this life. If you don't believe me, ask Genie on I Dream of Genie. Even a Genie has only one master. And that's just a Genie. We're talking about God, man. God, number one. Okay? How can you say that you serve God and money, or God and your boss, God and your wife? No, 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 no. It's got to be God. God, God, God. I'll tell you that. Nothing else. Okay? So if even a genie only only um, can serve one master, then I know obviously that the Almighty God only him is the only master which he should serve. Okay. Let's go back to verse um 22 for a second here because I want to discuss it a little bit more in detail. The eye of the lamp of the body. Therefore, if your eye is sincere, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body will be dark. And how great will be that darkness? Okay? I'm always telling people all the time, I know what I'm being lied to, not just from the sermon of the Holy Ghost, but also because of the shiftiness of their eyes, their body language, their inability to focus on my eyes when I'm talking to them. I've always said what the Native Americans have said, and this is the same here in Scripture, the eyes are the windows for the soul, and they do not lie. Okay? So if your eye is full of light, that means that the love of God is within you and, and you're full of fire of, of the Holy Ghost. And that nothing can stop you from what God's promise for your life is. Obviously, if you're depressed and in, in despair and in darkness and stuff of that nature, well, you can only go so far as your flesh, flesh can take you. And let me tell you, your flesh ain't going to take you very far. You're going to have nervous breakdowns, you're going to flap out, you're going to get angry, you're going to throw tantrums. You're going to completely lose your mind because the flesh is something that you do not put confidence in. Paul said that, I do not put confidence in the flesh, but in he who has delivered me. Okay? We're no different. Second, the third verse, I should say. The third verse is 1 Corinthians 3, verse 4. And this is relevant because it connects the first part and the second part together. wraps it up very nicely. That's why I kind of added it in there. I wasn't going to put it in there, but it works. For whenever someone says, I'm with Paul, and another says, I'm with Apollos, you are so unspiritual people. Okay? It's true. I'm serving Paul. I'm serving Apollos. Let me address that by saying, let's go down to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, and that's the answer to that question. Watch. Imitate me also as I imitate Christ. That's what Paul said. See, he's saying, follow me as I'm following Christ. Not follow me as I'm chasing the Cadillac. Don't follow me as I'm ro robbing the streets. Don't follow me as I'm burning down buildings in Ferguson, Missouri. Don't follow me when I'm watching dirty movies. Don't follow me when I'm chasing the, the sins of the world. Don't do that. Follow me as I follow Christ. See? And he could have said the same thing to Apollos. And Apollos could have said the same thing. Follow me as I follow Christ. So I'll tell you, follow Charles as I follow Christ. 
If at one point you see I'm not serving the Lord and I'm not where I should be, then you need to correct me and tell me and stop following me and, and, and consider me a wayward brother until I get back right with God again. You see? Because a crooked vessel cannot lead a straight vessel to its destination. Okay, it can't. It'll end up off course someplace, and you're going to plan to go to Alaska, and you're going to end up in Antarctica. Just the opposite direction you're going. That will not work. Okay, you cannot follow crooked teachers and crooked paths. You have to be on focus, on target, on goal, in the name of Jesus. Okay? Philippians 4.13 I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Where to start there? I love that verse and I hate that verse. I had to put that in here because that's actually the verse I'm talking about. I'm always hearing people all the time come to me and say, Oh, look before 13 says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus to be blah, 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 blah. Then they go out and they sin someplace. Or they go out and chase after what they want. Or they go out out of their mind. They quote that verse and then go do something stupid right afterwards. Is that God? I think not. Therefore, I present this scripture verse to you as a question mark. Um, something to think about. Something to inference towards the other application of the other four scripture verses I gave you. Revelations, Matthew, 1 Corinthians 11, and 1 Corinthians 3. I'm giving this to you for those so you can consider those scriptures when you consider this verse. And say... I can do um, all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay? But it doesn't end there. Let me tell you why. Okay? This is the message. Okay? Right here. Turn to John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. This is the one that I was asking God. I don't understand. This, first, um, this, this message doesn't make any sense. You're telling me this, but then you're showing me that. It's because Philippians 4.13 wrapped it up very nicely. Okay? I am the true vine, and my master is the father of the vineyard who is the keeper. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more so fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a vine, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine. Let's get back to that in a minute. So neither of you can, neither of you can unless you remain in me and I in him that produces that much fruit. Because you can do nothing without me. You can do nothing without me, okay? That's the message. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, they throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Okay? So, you say... Okay, Philippians 4.13 says, I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you're in the vine, if you're in Christ, if you're in right standing, if you're standing on the foundation of the Word, if you're being found worthy through the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, if those things stand to be true, then you can move mountains. You can grow mustard seed into an ocean. You can um, raise the dead. You can do all these things and even more greater things in Christ who strengthens you if you are grafted into the vine as a branch. You see? I'm so sick and tired of hearing everybody casually throw around scripture verse. Oh, Romans 8 15 says, Philippians 3 15 says, blah, 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 blah. And they quote the word and they memorize. This is what you bothers me over here. This bothers me a lot. They memorize the words in the scripture verses. And they don't apply them nowhere. Okay? But then when you, as a Christian, come up to them, or even worse, a devil comes up to them, whatever case, a Christian or the devil, 
comes up to them, they have the audacity to, to cry out and, 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 cl and claim that word and address that word to you and then walk away like it means nothing. That's not what Jesus said when he said to learn the word and let it grow in you that you may apply it to your life. That's not what he meant. What he meant was to apply it to your life that it gives you power and authority in the word that you'll be able to be qualified to yield the sword so that when the evil day comes, when the Satan does come to you, you can use it in power and in magnitude and fortify the fortress of Jesus Christ. That's what he meant, boy. Not to go, eh, John 3, 16 says, hey, you know, I know I'm not talking to the youth and I know I'm not talking to the novices, you know. I know you guys do that. I'm not making fun of you, okay? I'm not. I love you just like everybody else. I pray more come into the fold. I do. I'm talking to the ones that claim to be representatives of Christ. I'm talking to the ones that claim to be prophets, apostles, pastors, evangelists, teachers, people in authority over God's people. And yet, they apply the word of God so weakly, so feebly, so nonchalantly to their life and then throw it at you like, <laughs> and then walk away, and then expect God to move? How is God going to move with a weak word like that? He ain't. He's got to have some foundation to it, man. You know? I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me, because he is divine, I am the branches, and I can't do nothing without him. See? It says, I can't do nothing without him but with him I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me do you understand what I'm getting at now see that's the main crux of my message today and now I got a little treat for you something that's a little bit different that's a little off topic but it still goes along with what I'm talking about we got the 4th of July coming up pretty soon so I wanted to get this message done yeah I had a little anxiety in there I kind of messed it up a little bit but the point of the matter is, I taught you the point of the message of what I'm trying to get across. We have this thing in America, it's called the um, Pledge of Allegiance. And we stand in front of some stupid flag, and we stand up and go just, I right, pledge allegiance to the flag. You know, I can say this, let me tell you why. I was in the military for 12 years. I served my country diligently, okay? I love my country, and I'll be the first to tell you. If, if, if some you know invaders start falling out of the sky in my country, I'm going to be the first one out there shooting them. Seriously. But i got to address this because it's true. It's dumb and it's stupid and it's retarded. They took prayer out of schools. They took the Bible out of schools. They took prayer out of the court. They took Bibles out of court. We wonder why there's so much injustice so, um, going on in the courtrooms. And we wonder why nobody's learning a dang thing in school. And yet, we still make them stand there and say, I pledge allegiance. To what? To a country that took away the rights? To a country that treats everybody with disrespect? To a country that wants to brainwash you and feed your brain on your full all these things that never happened? I have problems with that. So I went online because I remember I've heard of this before, but I wanted to find it for myself. I pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ and to God's kingdom for which he died. One spirit led people the world over indivisible, with righteousness and love and justice for all. God bless you. I love you all. Paul Sarazwell. That's called the Pledge to Jesus Christ. Okay? So consider my words and apply them diligently to your life and you will be greatly rewarded. Okay? may not be money. It may not even be a place to live. You might even have a grumbling stomach where you're hungry. Okay? And I feel for you. I really do. I'll pray for you if you do. Okay? But when God rewards somebody, He rewards them with enlightenment, with discipline, with direction, and with foundation. And when you get those things, all four of those things in your life, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Hey, see? I could be sitting in a fire. I could be in the electric chair. Somebody could be killing me. I don't care. I'm serving the Lord. 
That's what the most important thing is, is, is honesty, truth, righteousness, and being where God wants you to be. I'm like, once again, so I'm, I'm not attacking the government. I'm not attacking anybody else's government. I'm just acknowledging the facts for what they are. God comes first. Nation comes second. God bless you all.